Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are out going to an antique show in Hastings, Michigan. Uh, this is uh, kind of something for us to do. I mean, the winter has been kind of rough. Uh, not a lot of auctions going on, like one a month and they're not very good right now. Uh, state sales have been pretty far away. So I figured why not get out there and get that notification off of there. And um, see what they have here. I, I, last I heard they had over 50 vendors here. Um, and you never know. I don't know. I don't know anything they have here. It's all kind of like they pretty much said when they show up, this is what they have. Five dollars to get in, which I'm not a huge fan of just because five dollars for you don't even know what you're gonna get. You might even get nothing, you know. So at least at our festival it's free. So you get a chance to come in, shop around, and it doesn't cost you anything. But one way or another, we're gonna go in and try to find some stuff today. Um I have mom, and then she doesn't want to be in, but she's gonna be in. My Aunt Denise is back there. So a family <laughs> event today. We have uh, the whole, not the whole fam, but some of the fam coming with us today to check us out. Cause again, it's it's winter and it's kind of slow out here. So uh, yeah, let's get inside. I'm gonna have the GoPro on. We'll uh, roll around, see if we can find anything. I'll show you guys everything that's there. And then maybe we come home with something, maybe not. If not, it's just gonna be a fun time to go out and try to find some antiques and see some new dealers. So, all right guys, we're gonna head inside, show you everything. We'll talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye. Alrighty guys, let's go do some shopping around here. Now this antique show had a little over 50 vendors in it. Um, I thought it was a lot of good stuff. Uh, I think the prices were a little high, but I know the vendors that were there, uh, I talked to quite a few of them and they say that the rent was kind of high. So uh, they definitely had to make up their money, so I understand that. Um, I seen this nice blue squirrel. You don't see too many squirrels. Um, not marked, so it really wasn't uh, too much. But I think he had like 45 on it. Again, a little much compared to what I could probably get for, especially not being marked or whatnot. But this was actually a really nice glass booth. Had a lot of nice uh, Fenton and um, depression glass and whatnot. Um, but it was fun to go through it and look. This lamp was just absolutely gorgeous. I think it's a Tiffany style lamp. Uh, I think they had like two twenty five on it, if I remember right. Um, very cool piece though. I mean, these guys had a lot of great stuff. Now we have a lady that collects Scotty dogs. And so every time I run across a Scotty, I always try to make sure I take a look at it and, uh, see if I can get it for her because she's one of those great ones where you could call her and it's like, Hey, got a Scotty in. She's a like, great, I'll be in. And it's always, so it's always a quick sale, which is really helpful as well. Um, when you guys are out trying to buy to resell, I mean, that's a huge thing. Already having buyers in place is, like it's a, such a huge advantage because a, like that's a lot of what people don't understand when you get into business and you start making connections at networking it really helps to know that hey guess what i can buy this scotty knowing there's a buyer i can buy this cast iron knowing there's a buyer it makes buying so much easier and it makes pricing stuff so much easier because you know exactly what you'll be able to get out of it even if you have to contact them yeah, it has a really nice picture coming up here. It's not even, I think I think I don't think it's old, but I always I'm a sucker for the signs like this that are you know funny. It has an animal on it. Animals are always popular. Cows are huge. We're in a uh, you know a, a rural area, so uh, farming stuff is always big. Uh, now this vendor actually is one of our vendors at our festival in April or in May. So May fourth, make sure you guys mark your calendars. Um, so this was actually a fun one. I got to sit and chat with her for a minute. And I actually did buy a few things from her that you guys will see at the end of the video. Um, but she's a very nice lady. Ran, uh, gave me a great deal on um, the stuff I was purchasing. So, uh, yeah, like I said, it's a cool part about getting in this business is really the relationships you build. We build so many great relationships with vendors and customers and just people in general. So it really helps us out in the long run to be able to, you know, buy and sell. I mean, that's really the name of the game. Um, this is her partner. They do, uh, um, boost together every time. So I always want to make sure I go through and give it a good gander and make sure there's nothing there I need. Um, and like I said, on this auction or this auction, I'm too used to going to auctions, this antique show, I was really looking for uniqueness. Uh, that Pyrex set back there, 225, a uh, really good price, a complete set like that. It's always hard to find. Pyrex has not gone down in popularity. We are still selling Pyrex like crazy around here. Um, but you know, when you come to a show like this, I, I really just enjoy, you know, going around and see what, but again, looking for unique stuff at the sales like these are what I'm looking for. And there wasn't a lot of just unique items here. There was a lot of just your run of the mill antique show, antique stuff. And that's okay. It really is. I mean, these glass slippers I always look at, I think they were like $13 a piece, a little, about $5 more than what I would probably get out of, especially an amber one or, you know, the color wise, it always matters as well amber is a pretty common color as well as like your oranges and whatnot um 
but yeah looking for that unique item is always what i do i mean i'm on facebook marketplace daily trying to find unique items that i can you know to bring into the store to attract customers or whatever it may be people love coming in and seeing something they've never seen before and that's why we have like something like the tiger because people come in still on the daily like oh my gosh that tiger uh this i'm pretty sure this is an old batman figure i couldn't find a date on it but it was missing an arm and it was in pretty rough shape and her price was more <laughs> her price was like it was complete not necessarily that there was something wrong with it so um, I definitely had a pass on that. Uh, now, this vendor here is actually somebody I frequent quite, or not frequent, but he is at auctions quite a bit, a lot of the same auctions I'm at. So I kind of know the stuff he buys, and I kind of know the prices he pays. So I knew there wasn't going to be a lot in this booth that I could uh, do with, do much with. So it was kind of one of those, like, hey, I'll go in and take a look, make sure there's nothing there I need. But I kind of knew his prices were going to be a little high. And again, I think shows like this are not necessarily for a reseller like myself. They're more for collectors. Um, but you never know. Sometimes you get some good deals. And I did get some good deals today. So I, you know, that's why you have to go is because you just never know. But these ones are more for collectors, in my opinion. I just don't foresee you getting a lot of things you're going to be able to resell at these kind of shows, especially the shows you have to pay for. Now, when there's an admission to get in, that's always tough because the vendors have to raise their prices because usually the rent's higher because they're trying to the, the showrunners are trying to make a little more money. So again, I understand it. It's all part of the business and whatnot. It's just um, you know not the best for resellers. But I still love coming. Like I said, I will always go to antique shows and you know that's there's nothing that'll ever stop me from doing that unless the prices go super high to get in. But five bucks is not too much. So um, but yeah, this was uh, this was actually a really nice booth he had here i spent a little bit of time in there trying to hit a little cast iron toys and tractors um trying to find deals like i said i was on the hunt today to try to find something to make it worth the five dollars to get in in the travel i mean you got to make it worth your while and so sometimes i'll buy just to make sure i get something out of the deal um but these are the kind of booths i like um of course because you guys know i'm a video game collector pop culture 70s 80s 90s toys so these are the stuff I look for sometimes, but not all the time. But if I was to buy something for myself, it was probably going to be out of this booth. And um, there's some video games there I was going through. I mean, I'm up to just about 1,650 video games now. Um, so, yeah, the collection is still growing by the day, it seems like. Um, just haven't... Now it's the point where it's pretty much all the games I'm looking for are the hard-to-find ones that I have a hard time finding. So so now it's just kind of, you know, always looking and making sure. But a lot of the stuff is getting popular. Like So we try to make sure we get stuff like this for the store because when you got kids coming in or the teenagers that are just absolutely miserable that they're going to an antique store, it's cool to have stuff that they can, you know, uh, vibe with and understand, hey, oh, this is stuff I collect. This is stuff I look for. And so it makes antique stores not so scary. Um, now this booth right here, I'm going to kind of get into this a little bit. Um, but I've been looking at, and again, it's actually the end of this video, you'll see why, but I've been buying a lot of like the, the pinup posters and, you know, the, I've seen the paintings I had at the store, the, the nudity art, I've been kind of understanding that the market's pretty strong on that stuff. Um, so I've always been on the lookout for it and we've been picking stuff up lately and I don't, you know, let me know in the comment section what you guys think. I, I, I feel like the because everything's so digital anymore so when you go to digital and everything is on your phone and people can see everything on their phone but they don't have like a physical copy of something so i could be wrong in this and i might be wrong in the long run but like physical copies of like uh the old playboys i think are, i have a feeling they're going to go up in value i have a feeling like nudity art is going to go up in value i have a feeling that uh like pinups and stuff like that are going to go up in value because at some point yeah, you can see everything on your phone, and your phone's convenient. And I don't know about you guys, but I feel like I've kind of shifted away from my phone a little more. I don't know why that is. I think it's just, for one, my eyes. <laughs> I just can't take much anymore on the phone looking at stuff. Quick break, but these black Americana pieces here, gorgeous. I mean, I think they were 175 for the pair, but these things were really cool. Um, they were wood-carved. Uh, just a very, very unique piece right there. But just 175, there is just no room I could do anything, and I don't collect that kind of stuff. So, um, but these finger vases are something that's also gone up a lot in value. Man, these are something we used to get all the time for 20 to 25 bucks, and now they're like 150, 175. I mean, they're kind of crazy. But yeah, let me know on the the nudity. I, I just 
I don't know. I have a feeling that we've been selling more of it lately. It's so, I, I don't know. I think people look for the physical copies of stuff. And then I'm not talking about like, you know, your raunchy nudity. I'm more talking about your classy, classic nudity stuff. I think that stuff is going to, you know, continue to go up in value because I think people enjoy having physical copies. That Batman and Robin pennant was something I was really looking at, but I think he had $75 on it, which was kind of pricey. Um, that's a rabbit right here. I don't show at the end of the video. Um, but that felt rabbit, that yellow rabbit, I did purchase as long as, as well as um, you're going to see some rabbits up here because uh, it's the Easter season. Uh, we sell that stuff quite often, but of course I brought it back to the store and Amber was, you know, pretty much like, "Hey, that's coming home." So uh, those ra that rabbit or that rabbit right there, as well as um, I'll show you these ones. They're in the back there, um, behind the ceramic ones, the brown ones in the back. We picked up. And the ones on the right, the yellow one and the stuff on the right we picked up as well. So, um, yeah, so those came home, but Amber didn't. Uh, so you won't see those at the end of the video because Amber did hold on to those. But, um, but yeah, so that's kind of one thing I've been, seems like I've been buying more of lately, but we've been selling it. So, like I said, we've been selling some of the paintings that we bought from the estate sale in Ionia a while back in November. Um, and the pinup posters always sell. So we've got those framed. We bought some frames and framed them. So those are... Uh, stuff that we look for too. So I don't know. Maybe like I said, let me know in the comments what you guys think. If that's something you think will go up in value or do you think the digital part of the world is going to take over? Part of me thinks people enjoy the physical copy stuff in their hands a little more. Uh, but this booth right here was full of old toys. Very nice people running it. Um, but this will be one of the, uh, not red flags, but one of the things that kind of irritate me about some of these shows. So I'm looking at some girly candles right here. If you guys don't know what girly candles are, they're like, um, they're a pretty popular brand of holiday candles. Uh, there's an igloo and a choir singers and uh, yeah, those are the choir singers right there. I just picked up like 20 of these at an online auction for like $25. So I was like, man, if I can get a good deal on these, you know, we'll see. And so I, I showed the lady and she got her husband over and the man, the choir, she wanted like $50 for it. And he did the biggest thing that I don't like about these kind of antique shows. He goes, well, on eBay, they sell for 60. I'll do it for 50. It's like, man, buddy, um, that's a lot of money. I mean, even that Christmas thing I just picked up there, the sleigh and Santa, 175 on that. I mean, it's not even worth it. I mean, it's, I, don't, I don't understand. Um, I don't understand the pricing sometimes. To me, and I, I kind of you know mentioned this with our vendors that come into our store. If you are going to price stuff based off of eBay, you're not buying right. You're just not. Um, you know, we I price stuff a lot of times based off what I pay for it. So if I'm paying twenty dollars for something, and I can get 50, 60 bucks for it. And even if it's worth $100, if I can get that $50, $60, I'm doubling my money and it gives room for somebody else to buy it and be like, wow, I'm getting a good deal. Even if they're trying to resell it and they're trying to get that full amount out of it, that's fine too. Because at the end of the day, you know, all you're really trying to do is profit, make money, and then go on to the next thing to buy more items. And if your goal is to just make the top dollar and everything, you're not going to be in this business very long. And if you are, it's because you have a big bankroll that most of us don't have. Now, this Barbie Corvette that came up here, I was really happy to see because Barbie, obviously, the movie just came out, very popular. Um, this came out, still in the original box. I believe it's early 1980s. Um, original box, the car was missing the luggage in the back there, he said. Um, he had $12 on it, and man, for 12 bucks, I paid, I, I offered him 10 just save me a couple bucks because I don't like dealing, I, I try to deal in whole numbers, 5, 10s, 15s, 20s. It just, it just makes it easier. But So he took my 10 bucks for it, so... Um, we got that for 10 bucks. I was really happy for. I think we're going to put 25 on it. I think I talked about that at the end of the video. Um, but I thought it was a really cool piece. He was great too because he was pretty much, I came here to sell. You know, that's why I'm here. So I want to make sure I sell stuff. I'm like, perfect, man. That's great. I was like, we got there the first, I mean, you know, right in the morning, right when it opened at 10 o'clock. So, I mean, the fact that he wanted to make deals so early, I think he's going to do really well at that place because when you're trying to, you know, resell, it's about making deals. It's about getting customers. It's about repeat customers, especially to come back. If you're a good seller, you know, people are going to come back to your booth because they know you're going to try to sell stuff and not just try to get the top dollar for everything, which goes back to what I was talking about before. Uh, now, this booth was really nice. I liked his setup. I liked a lot of the items he had in here. Uh, his prices were right up there, though. I mean, so I didn't get a chance to buy anything out of here, but that beware sign down there was really nice. Um, but yeah, good, or good, uh, a good variety of items. These... Uh, these, uh, I call them like silk vases over here, 75 bucks a piece, just a little much compared to, um, yeah, those right there, but a little much compared to what I can get out of them, but I thought they were really cool, and I know they would sell, but 75, there's just no room for me to do anything. Now, I understand when some vendors have booths, I don't, you know, maybe profit is not a big deal, but man, 
I just don't understand the high prices sometimes unless you're paying too much, which, you know, it's tough too. Um, now, political stuff like that, the Republican trash can, I thought was really cool. I think they had 25 on it. Again, I just didn't, not much room there to, to do anything with. But still, nonetheless, you know, cool items. You know, the things you don't see very often are the things I always look for. You know, and that's a lot of times people don't understand is when they call us and say, hey, I got this and this. It's like, yeah, well, we see that all the time. Not really big sellers on that. So <laughs> you kind of got to move on and hopefully you don't irritate too many people. The fact that you, uh, you have to pass on a lot of things that you see all the time. Um, but yeah, other than that, man, I, I really think we have, uh, this was a good show. I hope it comes back. I hope they have it. They do it again every year. Um, cause it gives people something to do, especially in February. February is a tough month. Uh, January and February are two of the roughest months. Thanks Norm. Um, to, for the antique reselling business, mainly because of the fact of the lack of yard sales, garage sales, you know, estate sales are still out there, but lack of auctions as well. All right, guys, we are back in the shop, uh, back here working. <laughs> um, but we did get some stuff at the uh, antique show, so let's run around. We'll show you guys real quick, and uh, you guys see a little bit of the store as well. So I'm going to turn this around, and we'll show you guys what we got at the antique show. So first things up, we picked up all of the pinups. All pinups framed. We ended up getting a good deal. She gave us to them for like 8 bucks, is what it ended up being. Uh, so we're going to probably get, I'm putting 25 bucks a piece on these guys. I'm hoping... Um, hoping even if I take 20% off of that, I'm still going to make some really good money off of it. Um, so yeah, we got, uh, got those. If you guys remember these, these are from that estate sale. I only got a couple of these left. I got these two, the Indian and the deer. We've sold all the rest of them. Um, we also got the Barbie Corvette. Um, that's upstairs. Probably won't show you guys that. Um, but we did get the Barbie Corvette for 10 bucks. Took a deal on 10 bucks. We'll probably get, probably put 25 on it in here and see what happens. But yeah, so those couple things kind of stay away from the radio there. Um, but yeah, that's all we got there, man. I thought prices were kind of high on it. Let me flip this around real quick. I thought prices were kind of high there. I mean, but I know the vendors had to pay a pretty good amount of money to be a part of that festival. So I could see why the prices had to go up, but I had to make sure I bought something because it cost us $5 to get in, which my aunt was awesome. She got in front of my $5 like I needed her to. So thank you, Aunt Denise. But uh, nonetheless, um, yeah, it was a lot of fun. I like going to those antique shows because you really never know. I was really looking for like one really unique item. It was more like one of those like wow kind of things. I really didn't see that there. Which, hey, just getting back in the game, that's what it's going to be sometimes. So, um, yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, we've got plenty of videos coming up. Q's and A's coming up. Collecting 101's coming up. All in the book. Uh, ready to come for you guys. So, enjoy that. Enjoy this. Thanks, guys, for watching. If you guys want to like, subscribe, comment, share, all that great stuff. Much appreciated. And if you guys get some time and you want to come out and see me, or she's actually here. Might as well show her. Because now we're really pretty much both here on Saturdays now. So... If you guys want to come see me or Amber, I'm going to pop this around real quick. There she is. If you guys want to come see us, feel free to stop out and get your antique fix on M66. All right. See you guys later.